To deal with workplace bullying is a three-pronged approach, practical, psychological, and spiritual. To deal with workplace bullying, you need a social worker, a therapist, and a spiritual healer. You do not need a lawyer. There are no laws against workplace bullying, and I do not have hope that there ever will be, so workplace bullying is not a legal matter. Because one of my theories about workplace bullying is that it is spiritual warfare happening on an energetic level, ultimately we deal with it spiritually. We do not deal with workplace bullying in the 3D, we deal with it in the 5D. To deal with workplace bullying, the last thing in the world that you want to do is turn around and confront workplace bullies. If you have any response at all whatsoever to workplace bullying, I guarantee you, you will be gaslighted and scapegoated and the bullying will become all your fault. In fact, they will go so far as to paint you out to be the bully. Another one of my theories about workplace bullying is that it is a form of narcissistic abuse, so workplace bullies are narcissists or, at the very least, have some narcissistic tendencies. And narcissists live for conflict. Narcissism is an antagonistic personality style. The one thing that workplace bullies really want is a fight with the target. The minute that you have any kind of response at all whatsoever to the bullying, they will view it as an invitation to fight. They have been waiting for some kind of emotional engagement from you since day one. A response is what they want. So if you cannot respond to workplace bullying, how can you deal with it? How do you deal with workplace bullying? There are a few practical steps that you can take that if they will not stop the bullying will alleviate your suffering somewhat. First, learn how to detect a workplace bully. How do you know you have a workplace bully on your hands? Workplace bullies have no boundaries and no empathy. No boundaries, no empathy. One or both of those will rear their ugly heads within minutes of meeting a workplace bully, sometimes even before you meet them. Workplace bullies are also pathologically jealous. In fact, pathological jealousy is the root cause of all workplace bullying. How do you know someone is jealous of you? It's this lurid, salacious curiosity, this obsessive scrutiny, this unrelenting hypercriticism, and this unnecessary competition. So if someone is violating your boundaries and treating you without empathy, which is to treat you as though you are not a human being, and exhibiting pathologically jealous behavior toward you, know that you have a workplace bully on your hands and take steps accordingly. Just psychologically speaking, one way to address workplace bullying is to stop caring about what other people think of you. As the saying goes, what other people think of you is none of your business. I understand all the slandering and the smearing and the lies hurt. It is outrageous. It's maddening. But think about it. You don't have a good opinion of these people. You have called them bullies and narcissists and may not consider them human beings at all after they treated you as though you were not a human being. Is it fair to care about the opinions of people when you don't have a good opinion of them? So let's be fair. As much as the narcissistic smear campaign hurts, it is not fair to care about the opinions of people when you don't have a good opinion of them. Workplace bullies as narcissists are the ones who care way too much what other people think of them. Learn to take every single word out of the bully's mouths and turn it around as a projection of how they really feel about themselves. Workplace bullies are narcissists and there is one way and only one way to deal with narcissists and that is to do something called going no contact because narcissists don't change. Any therapist worth her salt, if she learns that you are in a narcissistically abusive relationship, will advise you to go no contact. When no contact is not feasible for whatever reason, for example, you are parallel parenting with the narcissist or you work with them, you do something called gray rock, whereby you become emotionally unresponsive to the narcissist. Narcissists are easily distracted by pretty shiny things. It's like a baby with a mobile, a toddler in a toy store, or a little kid in a candy store. The idea behind Grey Rock is that you become so boring and uninteresting to the narcissist that the narcissist just gives up, goes away, and leaves you alone. When you are dealing with a narcissistic workplace bully, you respond in monosyllabic phrases, yes, no, okay, please, thanks, etc. If anyone asks you personal questions, you have only one response, I don't know. 
Do not engage with workplace bullies on any level, above all emotionally. And above all, do not defend yourself. If you attempt to defend yourself, all of your protestations will fall on deaf ears. I want to stress that gray rock is something that needs to be done from the very beginning. Once your boundaries slip, that is the point of no return. If you are initially authentic and then attempt to go gray rock with narcissistic workplace bullies, you will be accused of not being collaborative, not being a team player, not playing well with others, not getting along with the others, etc. Common advice for targets of workplace bullying is to never talk about anything personal. Do not reveal any information about your personal life. Narcissists love to prey on insecurities and they will view anything that you share not as an authentic contribution in the spirit of equality but as a vulnerability to turn around and use against you. Narcissists are also takers and just as they try to sabotage everything about you, especially your work, they will also try to destroy your close, intimate, personal relationships, family relationships, and friendships, even going so far as to contact your family members and friends to badmouth you even after you have been eliminated from the workplace. These people are sick, y'all. Above all, do not discuss anything about your future, your hopes, dreams, wishes, goals, ambitions, aspirations, because workplace bullies are pathologically jealous and they will try to sabotage those too. One thing that I've always wanted to do is to invent a fake boyfriend or spouse complete with fake social media profiles for the benefit of morbidly curious workplace bullies. So if you want to go so far as to make up a fake phony, false spouse or significant other, then feel free, be my guest, go ahead and have fun with it. Another piece of advice for targets of workplace bullying is to never try to be funny. Your jokes will fall flat with humorless workplace bullies. Again, anything you say or do will be used as a vulnerability to be turned around and used against you. Even a smile is considered an opening for attack because these people are that petty. They have been waiting since day one to expose your vulnerabilities and insecurities, to manipulate, take advantage of, exploit, turn around, and use against you. Also, if you try to get laughs from workplace bullies, what you will get instead is more ridicule, mockery, and making fun. Trying to be funny in a workplace bullying environment just sets you up to become a laughing stock. Workplace bullies view someone who is trying to be funny as a target for more ridicule. Again, dealing with workplace bullies is gray rock, monosyllabic responses, yes, no, okay, I don't know, etc. Spiritually speaking, one of the first things you can do before working anywhere is a little thing I call the freezer trick. You write the person's name on a piece of paper three times, fold it three times, put it in a bag of water, and put the bag of water in the freezer. That way the person is frozen and cannot touch you. Set your intention when you do this. You are doing this to make yourself untouchable. I do this with the names of every coworker and client when I start working any new job. And while I find that it doesn't stop the bullying completely, it can reduce it somewhat. Rule number one of dealing with workplace bullying is avoid, avoid, avoid. You may look like you have avoidant personality disorder, but what you really are is a codependent empath trying not to get eaten alive, chewed up and spat out by psychopaths, sociopaths, and narcissists. Above all, avoid confined spaces. This includes the elevator, the copy room, the bathroom, and above all, the kitchen. Repeat after me, bullies get away with more behind closed doors. Workplace bullies, especially mean girls, love to use confined spaces as an opportunity for more hardcore bullying, out of sight, out of earshot of the higher ups and the people that they're trying to impress. Try to see if you can find an isolated bathroom on a different floor away from the one the bullies use. And I don't care what floor you work on, you do not take the elevator in a workplace bullying environment. Don't believe me? Try getting in an elevator with a workplace bully and see what happens. So take the stairs and get some exercise instead. Instead of using the copy room, swallow the additional expense of making copies at home or at a third party location. And when it comes to the kitchen, that's a whole other matter. Because of workplace bullies' pathological obsession with your food, it's best not to use the kitchen at all. So let's talk about the food situation in a workplace bullying environment. Oh, my lanta. 
workplace bullies are obsessed with your food. They're obsessed with food in general because that's their level. This base, primitive, earthly, mundane, 3D, physical reality trapped in the matrix, experiencing life exclusively through the immediate five senses without any imagination, creativity, or even abstract thought. And workplace bullies view eating as another vulnerability to turn around and use against you because eating means you're human. When you are working in a workplace bullying environment, you do not eat in the presence of workplace bullies. Eat in your car if you have to. Do not use the kitchen, which means you do not store your food in the kitchen. If you do, workplace bullies may steal it and eat it, or poison, or otherwise try to spoil or taint it, or at the very least go through it without your consent or permission. So invest instead in portable containers, totes and thermoses to keep your food at the desired temperature and consume it out of the presence of workplace bullies. Or just don't eat, forego food entirely, go on a liquid diet. Let me tell you something, a workplace bullying environment is great for weight loss. As for dealing with workplace bullies themselves, one trick I like to use is creative visualization. As with all narcissists when they are abusing you, one thing that you can do is put it on a stage. Visualize what is happening as though it is a scene on a stage and you are a member of the audience and like a spectator you can turn up or turn down the volume with a remote control at will. That way you are in control of it. This is something that works for anything that is upsetting including those negative obsessing and ruminating thoughts that creep in when we have complicated post-traumatic stress disorder from narcissistic abuse. Another thing you can visualize is cord cutting. Imagine a cord of any kind. It could be a rope or a thread of electricity connecting you to the other person and then take a blowtorch to the cord and burn it. You are severing your connection to this person. Alternatively, you can just blowtorch the person or use whatever weapon you want. Of course, we don't wish these people any harm. This is something that is just cathartic and even a little bit amusing for you. I use a scene that I believe is out of the movie The Omen and I find it immensely satisfying. Another thing you can do is get a journal, and I'm not talking about writing in your diary every day as is recommended in this superficial law of attraction culture. I'm talking about a journal that you actually keep inside the workplace. This one works best for office environments in which you are seated all day. Your journal can be a binder or a notepad that looks like everyday office supplies. You can write in your journal what you really think about these people and what you would say to and about them if you were allowed to speak in a workplace bully environment. If you are a target of workplace bullying, you cannot speak, but you can write. Just as with any journal, you don't let anyone read it. Your journal comes and goes with you. You take it with you. If anyone asks you what you are doing, you are simply taking notes related to your work. No one can argue with that. That's how you stay organized. One thing that I like to do in any workplace bullying environment is give nicknames to my bullies. Again, this is something that you do in secret, in private, that you don't share with anyone, above all workplace bullies. It is something that you do purely for your own catharsis and amusement. I like to give nicknames to almost all of my workplace bullies, sometimes multiple nicknames for one particularly bad bully. My nicknames for my workplace sexual harasser were Count Chocula or Nosferatu, among other vulgar terms that I will not share here, because I find it amazing how many narcissists literally look like vampires, and I believe that the vampire legend originated as a metaphor for narcissism. Nicknames don't have to be particularly creative or original, they just have to be nicknames. When you are dealing with two workplace bullies, because workplace bullies always come in pairs, you can call them Humpty and Dumpty, Tweedledum and Tweedledee, or just Dumb and Dumber. And when I have three workplace bullies, because one of the points I make about workplace bullying is that workplace bullies never act alone, my nicknames for them are Syphilis, Chlamydia, and Gonorrhea. Your use of nicknames should be so robust and pervasive that you don't even remember these people's real names. Another thing you can do is get a mantra. This is your universal response to all workplace bullies when they are bullying you. Just one thing that you can say in response to all bullying. So when people are playing mind games with you, ridiculing you, holding their noses at you, etc., 
find one thing that you can say in response. My mantras are, what a horrible person and poor little thing. What a horrible person and poor little thing. Your mantra can be just one word, like mean-spirited, ridiculous, or immature. Like the journaling and the nicknames, this is something that you do just to make yourself feel better. This is something that you say out loud to no one in particular. If they call you on it, you can just lie and say that you were responding to something that you read in the news. Again, they can't argue with that. Something that you want to be sure to do when you are dealing with workplace bullies is laugh and smile a lot. Narcissists hate being laughed at. If you think about it, this stuff is genuinely funny. Narcissists may not know a sense of humor if it shot them in the face, but they are always unintentionally funny. You can't make this stuff up. The jokes write themselves. Again, if you have any kind of response at all whatsoever to workplace bullying, they will make the bullying out to be your fault. They will gaslight and scapegoat you, and they will go so far as to paint you out to be the bully. The only response that you are allowed is laughing and smiling. After all, one of the false accusations that workplace bullies love to hurl against the target is to accuse the target of being quote unquote unhappy when all you are doing is having a perfectly normal, natural, sane, emotional, healthy response to being bullied, you happen to kind of sort of like, um, you know, not like it very much, but when you do that, they will turn around and accuse you of being unhappy. So fine, when they are bullying you, laugh and smile a lot. How can they accuse you of being unhappy when you've been laughing and smiling the whole time? Finally, one thing that is important to do is to never make eye contact with workplace bullies. Narcissists hate that too. They hate being ignored. When you don't make eye contact with personality disordered people, which workplace bullies are, you show them what you really think of them, which is that they are irrelevant and insignificant to you, which is every narcissist's greatest fear. Also, not making eye contact protects you from their negative energy. If you have to look someone in the face, you feign eye contact by looking at the point between their eyes and one earlobe. It looks like you're making eye contact when you're really not. That way, you protect your own energy by not taking in other people's negative energy through your eyes and you show workplace bullies what you really think of them. It's a powerful tactic. So those are some practical tips for how to deal with workplace bullying. I hope that helps. Take care.